God be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Exactly. Uh, but look how he demonstrated that while he walked the planet. He, he said he, he had compassion. Point. Yeah, in the one place where it says he had compassion on right. the masses and healed them of all their affliction. You know, Jesus didn't even ask him if we walk with the people, say, are you saved? And healed them. He healed everybody. Right. And when we looked at that one scripture we, we do, that you called attention to several months ago, where he said, go out and get the everybody, the good yeah. in He just said, get them all. And I think I'm not I'm not trying to make a distinction at this point. He made the distinction when this guy came in dressed in the wrong clothes. He, and he was the only one that got kicked out. But yeah. he brought in the good and the evil. So it was like he went fishing with a net and blessed everything. And and I think that is, you know, when when Christ died, and I'm just really getting to understand this. When right. Christ died, he died for everybody. Amen. He yeah, you know, um, yeah, and the other thing too, going back to the kingdom, uh, maybe you guys don't mind talking about the the I guess what would be the characteristics or the nature of the kingdom. Yes, sir. That we're talking about because when we the way I'm looking at it, and from what I've gathered from you guys and listening and, and remembering some of the conversations that we've had in the past, if there is a kingdom, then then there is a king. Amen. And 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 with that king in this particular case, the, you know, being Jesus Christ, he did everything uh, for the glory of the Father. So in that kingdom, everything that that he did, and 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 then it, as it transcends down to me, everything that I do is for the the glory of the Father. So whether you were saved or not, this is for God God's glory. And remember, Jesus said, "Hey, I didn't say anything, and I didn't do anything." Unless it was by the will of the Father. Uh -huh. So God was like, look, as you just said, elders, bless them all. Oh, That's, that is who we are uh, uh, about. That is our Father. Yeah. He said, I'm going to bless them all. It rains on the good and the bad. That's the kind of God I am. You know, Amen. that's, let that's, me, uh, look, go ahead, Jimmy. Let me break in for a second. And, uh, and of course, the Bible teaches us that God is love. So there's no argument or even disagreements in the fact that everything has to come from obviously yeah. love and everything emanates That's from it. the love of God. But let's go back to this conversation about the gospel of the kingdom. Yeah. Because I think Lee took some very important points and the kind of the points I've been trying to make the last couple times, but I think it's uh, kind of been uh, misunderstood. But I, I, I think I hear from the scriptures that the first thing Jesus preached was the gospel of the kingdom. Right. When he sent out his disciples, he told them to preach this gospel, the gospel yeah. of the kingdom. Yeah. Uh, that's all he preached his entire ministry was the gospel of the kingdom. Yes, After he died and rose from the dead and appeared to his disciples uh, in Acts, I think it's the first chapter. What did yes. he spend that time talking to them about? The gospel of the kingdom. Yes, that's sir. all he ever, he had no other message. Now, yeah. we're talking about a governmental body we're talking about the gospel and obviously that being the heading is all encompassing of a lot of different components Be because you have to know well how did he become the king well who is the king well what is his dominion well what are the characteristics of this kingdom well how does this kingdom operate what is the laws of this kingdom now we can we can we can deal on all of those aspects as much as we want and 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 and, and expound on them but don't don't think that's a separate gospel all within itself. It's still right. part of the gospel of the kingdom. It's yeah. still the gospel of the kingdom. And so and so and so my point was I think that there's really only one message. At least there was only one that Jesus ever taught, ever. His whole life from beginning, middle, end, and the ones he set out was to preach the gospel of the kingdom. And of course, it has a lot of aspects to it. But 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 central to everything, obviously, is the gospel of the kingdom, because that's what happened. A kingdom came that's different from this one that we live in. Yes. And, 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 and so he had to know, let them know that they had been introduced. And, and then, of course, it brings all these other questions into play. Well, how do I become a part of this kingdom? Well, what happens in this kingdom? Well, well who is the king of this kingdom? Well, what is his domain? What is his dominion? You can't be a king without a dominion. You got to have some 
area of territory to be a king over. And so I think all of that is all encompassing in the gospel of the kingdom. And that's why I say it's kind of, uh, it's kind of uh, what we preach, basically, or regardless of what we preach, we're still preaching, if any aspect of it, we're still preaching the gospel of the kingdom, in my opinion, based on what I hear, what I read from the scripture. Right, and I think that's, and I think that's what I'm saying is that when, when he said go preach the gospel, it, it's the fact is that Christ was basically saying preach the entire aspect of the gospel that goes into the kingdom. In other words, is the gospel of the anointing because you need to understand you walk with the power that comes through the Lord resting upon you. It is about the gospel of God because it's talking about the fact is that this kingdom is reigned by God. So you need to understand who reigns it. Even Christ had then said that, or at least the scripture said that when he put everything under his feet, he's going to subject himself unto God. Amen. You got to talk about the fact is that the gospel of peace. The fact is that he's saying is that in me, you have peace. In the world, you have tribulation, but be of good cheer, right? I have overcome the world. And, and you know, it's important that he even said that this world is not going to even come to, to an end. Uh, it's all, it's all hinged upon uh -huh. uh, that this gospel of the kingdom right. is preached throughout the whole world. Yeah. And, 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 and people, and not just uh, the good news about certain aspects, the gospel uh -huh. of the kingdom, then that's what's going to usher in uh, him coming again. And, and and I hear what you're saying. Again, it's still, we're saying the same thing different I know ways. We are. Yeah, I think it's we are. just this all components of the gospel of the kingdom. Because right. I mean, uh, because the, the king, a kingdom has come. Yes. And, and of course, it comes with, uh, just like any other body of government, it has laws, it has ways of operating, it has who's in charge, it has all these different aspects, and, and, and there's no denying all of that. But again, I still think that the foundation that it all sits on, I mean, you hang a picture on the nail, everything hangs on that picture. And I think the nail is the gospel of the kingdom. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I think I think that's what the scriptures are saying. Yeah, and I agree with you. I'm just saying is that that's probably why it said, it, it, it didn't say gospel of the kingdom, it said gospel, but I think he's just making sure you understand they're going to go teach all parts of the scripture because that's what this scripture right here the the uh one second he wanted you to break that thing down and teach all parts of the scriptures and that's what that matthew is all about go and teach verse 28 chapter 28 verse 20 teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i commanded you and Lord, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. So yes, I'm there's two, two chapters, or two books in the Bible, in the gospel, that have been given the title of the Great Commission. And in that commission, he's basically saying, I want you to make sure you teach them all things. And yes, they preach what Christ preached, which is the kingdom of God. And then what all those things entails in the kingdom. And I, and I think that's what it really comes down to is, is getting down to what it looks like. You know, when we talk about the kingdom of God, what does the kingdom look like? The king, what does he look like? We were given a manifestation of the king in Jesus Christ. He is manifest the image of the invisible God. He said that there ain't but one power, and that power is God. It's God. So when we look at the distribution, we look at any government, we're looking at distribution of power, application of power. That's what governments are. Yeah, that's another thing. I like that part about the distribution of power because he said, all power has been given unto me. And he said, Every, you will be endued with power right. on high, right? Yes. So yeah, I, I like the aspect of the fact of the distribution of power. Yeah. It's, it, it access to it. I mean, the thing of it is, is it says that you, the, the authority that we spoke of several, several days ago, uh, you, you don't access power from a system that you haven't submitted to. So if you have authority within a system, that means you submit it to the authority of that system. Oh, yeah, yeah. So when the centurion told him, he said, I, I, I know, you know, hey, only thing you got to do is speak the word. <laughs> I got power. I, in this system, I got power. I understand power in this system. <laughs> you seem to have power in a system that's greater than the system I'm operating in. And that's what we were, we were being told. We are the sons of God. We are administrators in this kingdom. We have been empowered by the person that we have submitted to. You know, 
And I think a lot of this conversation stemmed from uh, the fact that when I made the comment about the subtitle, whereby the Bible was subtitled calls this the Great Commission, so yeah. on and so forth. And my point was, uh, a lot of times we can't allow man's subtitling to be now what we believe the scriptures taught because they can be misleading and it could be one man's opinion about what that scripture is about. So uh, just like the prodigal son, you know, that subtitle, prodigal son, which already points us to the one that walked away from God and that was doing things. That's what man called that particular aspect of it. The Bible says it was a, son, a father, a, son, a story about a father and two sons. So they're right out the gate. The, the subtitle took us somewhere that the scriptures didn't take us. So right. now I'm reading it skewed because of the subtitle. So my point was, um, just be a little leery. Sometimes they do help in explanations to understand certain things, but sometimes they can be misleading as well. And it kind of gives us some perspective. Like if I come up to meet Lee and I've never met him before, but you know him. And so then you pull me to side and tell me all this stuff about Lee before I meet him. Then when I meet Lee, regardless of how he is, my opinion of who he is and what he is is already skewed because you didn't already fill my mind up with all kind of other stuff instead of letting, allowing me to get to know him raw, say to so to speak, and see him for myself. That's what this, that's what those subtitles do for you. And so I think saying, "Oh, this is the Great Commission, and now this is our marching orders, and this is what we need to be doing," can be somewhat misleading if all the other scriptures don't support that that's true, that that's exactly what they're saying. So my point was kind of be leery of subtitles because sometimes they can be misleading and have us running off like something is major or something now uh, has been elevated above something else to the disregard of other things. And that might not be what the full counsel of God really teaches. That was only my point. Yeah, I agree. And I, what I guess I want, and I agree with you, and I just wanted to, to make sure people understood that this particular one, I think that subtitle doesn't, I don't think it skews you all as much. So I was just focusing on what it was saying. If you take the title away, let's move Great Commission out of the way, the word commission. And then we say, okay, what do we get out of it? We understand when we read the, the chapter dealing in Luke, dealing with the father and two sons, which it should have been the title anyway, because that's how Jesus titled it. When you read this one, Matthews 28, 16, is, is moving the title out of the way. What do you feel like we've been skewed away from the, the intent of it? And I... Uh, all you gotta do, all you gotta do is say that word great to kingdom. <laughs> it just says the word great to kingdom. We we good to go. The kingdom commission. Yes, sir. Okay. And in the kingdom commission, go preach the gospel. Yes, sir. Okay. 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 Uh but that that's what I, I I was wondering why I said why would they leave that when he when you move the title, subtitle out of the way, period. Right? Why well, would just say gospel? And I think that's right. Yeah. I, so I understand of saying the whole full gospel is what I'm getting out of it. Not you excluding, not excluding the kingdom, but also including the other aspect of the gospel. Let me uh, let me throw some attitude that I recently come to understand uh, is the reason why we we need to have a conversation like this, and that is. Uh, all, all of my life, I, I have I have a collection of, of materials that I've collected over the years. Particularly, I kept some of my old Sunday school books. Uh, I, I, I'm all, I was always a devout, uh, a committed person to study the scriptures, so I went to Sunday school. But here's one of the big, one of the serious areas that most churches make, and I now want to become an advocate for for change, and we need to understand. That, that when you pick up this book, when, when you start talking about scripture, you start talking about the study yes. and, and the meditation and the reflection on scripture so that you can get light from God. You uh -huh. need to understand, it is absolutely critical for you to learn how to think when it comes down to scripture. Right. It is, it is you, you don't want someone to tell you what to think. Uh-huh. You understand the difference? There's a difference between you learning how to reason through the scripture. In other words, 
when we come together, what we ought to be doing is looking at the scripture, extracting the object that scripture is set before, and, and challenging each one of us to think about what those objects are trying to convey us in, to us in terms of divine truth. Amen. Now you learn how to for God to deal with you. And you learn how to reason in scripture. And I think that's why Jesus did not give you the answer to all the parables. Yeah. Some parables he gave you the answer to, some he left open. Because he wants you to be able to look at the scripture, extract the object of what that scripture says before you, and allow you to the Spirit of God to get a hold of your mind and begin to influence you so he can walk you through and begin to open up to you the truth that is being communicated through those objects. Right. Now what happens is you begin to develop. You begin to develop. Not your pastor, not your Sunday school teacher, Amen. you. Amen. I agree. And this is why when we come together, there's and a lot of these people have got nothing to offer because all of their lives they've been told what to think. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Come on. Amen. Come on. And what I need for you to do is go back home and get with God and develop your spiritual comprehension, your spiritual reasoning, so that so that when you come back, you can you can have something to offer that I can't see because I realize I can only see one aspect of truth. See, I realize I'm limited. God ain't gonna show me everything. Otherwise, I've gone somewhere on the island and established myself as God. Right. I'm simply a charcoal on the grill with all the rest of the charcoal. I got a contribution, but you got a contribution. And what I am challenged to do, God has called me to realize now, you need to get me to commit to the, to the fact that I am the one that can teach them and show them and train them and develop them so that when they pick up the scripture, they can, under the influence of the spirit, they can reason that they can discern when someone is bringing something that's not true. Mm. Let me, let me tell you something. Oh, that, that don't fit. Because truth is just like God, it's homogenous, it's warm. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. If you bring yeah. in anything that is divisive, that's it. The Spirit of God will enable you to discern that that ain't God. Amen. You know, I remember, I remember it's probably about a year ago, and I thought about that even after it was said. Brother uh, Pat, uh, Bishop Lee is the one who said it. And you know, you can find an outline to any book in the Bible, you can find a hundred different ones written by different people. But Lee said one Sunday that. He was creating his own outline. He was reading the, the, the chapter and he was outlining it himself. Now, why would he do that? And there's a thousand outlines out there he could have grabbed because he wanted the scriptures to speak to him from what God was revealing to him about yes. his revelation word to gain an understanding and not be skewed in thinking by what somebody else was moved by or felt like or their focus was when reading through that thing. And I appreciated that so much because that's a different perspective. And that's the true, in my opinion, perspective that we need to cover the scriptures from. You know, I've often said this, and I was just saying this to someone last week. It's amazing how you mentioned that, that uh, education is super important, but I've learned that a lot of it is institutionalization. It's yeah. not education because again, in those uh, systems of learning, a lot of times they didn't teach you how to think. They told you what to think. Yeah. And that was a, that's a major problem. Then after you get out of that, I give you elements. I didn't teach you how to think. You don't know how to take those elements and put together, put them together and do nothing with them. Because I never taught you how to think. I yeah. always taught you what to think. So I crippled you. And I also yeah. have now institutionalized you to my way of thinking. So all you know is what I told you you know and you can't know nothing but above that because you never learned how to think on your own Amen. right you know with, with, with that in mind if if we uh, take that uh, that chapter that we had up for that brought in discussion moving the title out of the way brother Addison how would you read that just read it and then what do you see out of it okay then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubt. And Jesus came and spake unto them saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, 
I am with you always, even unto the ends of the world. Amen. Amen. I'm sorry I mentioned you the first one. I'm sorry. That one. Okay. And that's what we're talking about. Yes. And I, and I wanted to, to see how you read it without okay. the subtitle. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall, have, they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And, and from that, the other titles out of the way, what did you, what, what is that that you get from that? Got from it that it's the same thing he's been saying the whole time, nothing different. It's just being said in another place at a different time frame, but it can't. Because when you read something isolated, you have to also measure it against the holistic approach of everything that you know and everything he's done his whole time. So I, I, I personally didn't see that being promoted above anything else, but pretty much the same as what he's always taught from the beginning. And since well, he's know, never taught nothing, since he's never taught nothing but the gospel of the kingdom, then I would have automatically assumed he was still talking about the gospel of the kingdom and what and 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 uh, and the same exact conversation. I wouldn't have seen it any differently, personally. Yeah, and I and, and see the only reason I'm saying different a is two reasons. It's uh, not on how you read it, how I will read it, and how anybody else in here will read it. And I'm also looking at the person who's reading the scriptures. Well, um, in my mind, when, when I read this, I, I and as there's no different than the last time when I read this, uh, what stood out to me. Is that when it said he upbraided them with yeah. their unbelief yeah. and hardness of heart? Yeah, you okay, said. Okay, so he he had to come and present himself to them. Right. Yeah. And he says because they believed not them which had seen after he was risen. Yeah. So there was some that had not seen, which are we. Yeah. Now, now why is this important? Why is he upbraiding them about this? In my mind, it is because if they don't believe that he is and that he has returned from the dead, that is the gospel. Absolutely. If they can't believe that, then they can't go forth and preach the gospel because that is the foundation of yeah. this good news. Yeah. Because if you can't believe that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, what makes you think you woo, would be raised from the dead? Right. And and you see that all points back now to the kingdom. Yes. Because you see, the kingdom of God, Jesus said, is within you. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So so there there is this from the proclamation of this divine truth. If this truth finds conception in the heart of men, it births forth something that is out of this world. Uh -huh. And if what is birthed forth is the kingdom within the heart of man. Right. And that kingdom is based upon the death, the resurrection, and the imparted life of Christ himself through the spirit. Amen. If you don't believe that, then you disqualified the priest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Amen. Because, I mean, what can you preach other than that? Exactly. <laughs> Right.